Hey all, welcome back. Um, today I'm going to show you, you know, it, it's not going to be a, a full on, you know, exactly as I'm doing it, but I'm going to, um, you know, show you the different steps it takes to replace the uh, low pressure oil pump on a 7.3 liter power stroke. Um, our subject that we're working on is a 99, um, but it should work for the 94 and a half all the way up to um, early 2003 and uh, should also work for um, the international uh, T444 engines. Um, it'll all be the same. So anyways, uh, some of the footage did get lost, um, or that or I uh, meant to record, and after I got done doing what I was doing, realized that the camera didn't record, and so life happens. So anyways, uh, you know, get you a different camera view and, and uh, we'll get to it. Okay, so just kind of rotate this, you know, disconnect the this hose off the back of here. Just gonna rotate it around here. There's two screws, one here and one here. Gets this fan shroud loose. Now the there's a lot of few different ways to uh, get this fan off, but you have a big like 36 millimeter nut right down there. Um, I usually <clears throat> take an air chisel and just chisel it. it goes the same direction uh, it's not reverse thread or anything like that so you're gonna be going counterclockwise to loosen it All right, hopefully you can see that just get on one of these hexes over here on this side and just kind of buzz it off loose and then when it comes out we'll uh, get the shroud out with the fan and just be careful not to let it fall the light here so you can see what I'm doing just kind of spinning it off of here until the threads come out but you just want to make sure you have both your hands on it that way it falls and it doesn't into the radiator and just kind of finagle everything out. Bottom of the fan shroud just has these uh, tabs, you know, and I didn't drain the cooling system. Um, you just pop the upper radiator hose off of here and then just I just kind of tuck it back in here and yeah you lose a little coolant but you can replace it easy enough so that gives us a lot more room but to get the belt off of here and then um, get that harmonic balancer off belt tensioners uh, right here There's that square right there, fits a half inch drive ratchet right in there. Rotate it uh, like you're loosening, counterclockwise. And then um, now with the belt off, we're gonna lose this. Totally forgot about that. So we'll figure out something, but it, it can kind of just go anywhere. Right now we'll just stick it up here. And we'll just stick it back on in place. We'll have to, you know, you'd have to have this removed to get the belt off anyways, but we're not taking the belt out of here. So all we're doing is just you know, to get it off the harmonic balancer. And we'll just leave it like that. All right, so we got a, 24 millimeter socket, and this is why I wish I had a stubby um, impact gun. And I got to pick up in here, this is a manual. But, uh, the tire's blocked. If it's 
an automatic, you're gonna have to get creative, which means you can kind of take and hit this with a hammer. Redneck impact gun. Eventually, after you beat it enough. Loose. That's a bolt, not a nut. Forgot about that. Sometimes I've had these come off, but it's not supposed to. All right, in order to get this uh, harmonic balancer off, get a puller like this. And then um, there's a Woodruff key on the shaft to make sure it stays put. Usually they do. That's how, that's how that works. The puller's got to be designed to go through that part. It's pretty narrow. So... This particular set's got an extension piece that goes in here. You just don't want to use. You just don't want to use this because this won't fit through this, and you won't get anywhere. You'll just be prying against yourself like that. But you got to get the, the extension go through the inside the where the threads are in the shaft and go right through the crankshaft with it. So. There is the low pressure oil pump right there. The four bolts get it out. And then we'll get that pulled off and give you a better view of it. Yeah, there's four 10 millimeter bolts that uh, bolt that into place. Um, these gears will most of the time. come on out of there most of the time they're left on the engine like this when you pull this cover off of here and you just want to look in here and see if for wear or anything like that other thing you want to do is see he's got these two dowels you want to um, make sure that those go back on the engine one of them stayed this one didn't, so I'm going to take it and stick it back on the engine. Alright, the other thing you want to do is you want to inspect this surface around here and get it all cleaned up good. You don't want it to be like, you know, blue colored or something, something, you know, from a lot of heat. Because if it looks excessively worn, um, you'll have to replace the front cover, which is... Uh, Pulling the engine, <laughs> unfortunately, because uh, sealing the oil pan. Um, I mean, there's ways a person possibly could do it, but to get the best possible seal in pulling the engine is the really the best way to go. But it's really not that hard. But anyways, that's uh, you know we get that new. We'll, let's go have a look at the old pump versus the new pump. All right. At first glance, everything. Looks pretty close to the same. You got a sealing O ring. Um, but what you do notice is that these teeth are bigger. And I think there's just 10 of them, whereas these are smaller and there's like 14 of them. This pump is <coughs> designed not necessarily for more pressure, but more flow. And works, works very well works wonders on older engines that you know 
are just a little bit more worn out than than they were when they were new. You know, because obviously this worked great when it was new. But like I said, this is a, it's a Melling pump. That's the uh, part number. They're about a about a hundred hundred twenty dollars, give or take where you get it from. Um, Melling's just a, that's a good brand to use for these things. All right, what I do <clears throat> is I coat this O-ring and um, the gears and all that stuff up with uh, Vaseline. Having a pretty good coat amount of Vaseline on the gear itself will kind of help it prime. We've also got the uh, oil pan and stuff overfilled by like half a gallon. That's two quarts for those of you in Rio Linda. Good brownie points if anybody knows where that line comes from. Sure do miss that guy already. Uh, go ahead and pull the gear out of here and just coat it. You know, Vaseline will uh, <clears throat> dissolve very quickly in oil. So it's totally fine to do this. Um, if you can use it when you're working on automatic transmissions, you can use it on this. So just give a nice good coating on, on everything. We'll also jack the back of the truck up to uh, get some of the oil kind of push forward a little bit to kind of prime it and everything. They say, you know, to you know, dip these gears and all that stuff in regular engine oil and stuff, and that's fine too. Just seems like by the time you get um, you get you get these gears all stuck on and in place, um, that uh, <clears throat> oh, what am I trying to say? Oh, the oil kind of drips drips out of it before you know, and this this right here will stick and it'll stay there, so. All right, so what I do is go ahead and put the gear on and in place. Tolerance is going to go on with it really lightly. Tolerances are, uh, you know, pretty tight and everything, so, you know, don't force it. Just kind of just kind of wiggle it slightly back and forth, get it put into place, and then you stick your cover over the top of it. So then you get it on like that. And then um, you get your bolts put in. And you get your harmonic balancer on. Make sure your key gets started. And then get the bolt started in there. A lot of times it's necessary to, uh, you know, it's a, when you get putting this thing back on, to uh, smack it with a. Uh, rubber mallet you know just be careful be mindful of the radiator when you do until you can get some thread started and then you can suck this thing down by hand and then uh, figure out your method of tightening it I think I'm gonna be able to I didn't before on the way out and I think I can get my impact gun in here but it was a short socket and get her tightened up okay now the belts back on we move the upper radiator hose there so now we're ready to uh, slide down the uh, fan and the shroud um, got to do it both together that's how it came out so do that and once you get this started you can just kind of spin the fan, the clutch is stiff enough just to spin it on here. Okay, now we'll go grab my uh, air chisel. 
Put it on this hex over here. Go on this one here for good measure. usually all it takes okay we got everything put back together we got the uh, pickup jacked up way in the rear that's going to kind of allow the oil to come a little bit forward it's also a little over full and that should help uh, prime that pump okay we got oil pressure up there at uh, about 25 here at idle this thing is not stone cold, but um, she's cold enough. But we're cruising over here to uh, kind of a shitty place to put an oil filter gauge, eh? And that was just the easiest place at the time. About 1500 RPM, we're running about 50. Now he has to go take it for a drive and get her warmed up. <laughs> 